welcome back to Birmingham Fan TV. This is the BFTV review show sponsored by Royal Sports. Thank you very much to them as always. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe to the video. It shows, lets us know that you're enjoying what we create. So yeah, definitely do that please. Uh, and, and if you don't, Emily goes home and cries of a night, so. <laughs> Not entirely true, but you know. That is. <laughs> so we're actually going to go back to the review preview style format that we previously had. So uh, say hello, Blossom. Um, so we just thought that we'd give it a go, giving a, a one sort of video a week trial, um, just to see whether you guys prefer the long videos or the short videos. Consensus was shorter videos works best. If I'm honest, what probably works best for us as well. Um, it allows us to be able to break up things a bit better and, and go into more depth in a shorter period of time. So yeah. Thank you for giving us your feedback on that. The channel's always about the fans, so let us know what you want to see and we'll do it for you. Um, but in a few weeks' time, I'm very much looking forward to this. We've got a special BFTV podcast. It's been a while since we've done the podcast. Yeah. For various reasons. There's been a, a, a few things going on in all of our lives, um, but very excited to say that the boys will be back. We'll be having a Christmas fun episode with Mr. Fun and Mark and us too, and maybe some others if they come along. So yeah, look forward to that. Right, so let's just, after that very long intro from me, let's just jump into the video. Let's start with the lineup yesterday. I'll put things up on screen. Uh, the lineup, James, we had three changes to the team that drew versus Millwall. Uh, so we had Bella, Dean and McEachran in for Vialba and Roberts who are injured and Lukas Djukovic. Mm -hmm. uh, why do you think Pep made these changes uh, and why did they work so well? Um, obviously Dean's the obvious one. You've got to, obviously there wasn't really a, much of a choice when it comes to Roberts for Dean. He could have put Harden in but I, I don't think he was going to. It was Dean's chance to come back, did he okay against Mill, so he did that change. Um, Vialba... Obviously, again, says that he's picked up a bit of a knock. Um, so, okay, that's fair enough. But I think that he might have changed the Albert anyway. Don't think he's particularly been on his game last two games. Not played badly, but not been as effective. Yeah. So, Bella coming in, who's done okay recently, um, was, was the other change. And then I thought that the brave move was, was dropping Duke, bringing McEachran in to play as another anchor alongside Sunjic and pushing Bellingham on to give him the freedom to to cause a lot of problems in the final third and it was a massive change really um and it's one that i've been pining for for a, a while now since probably since the blackburn game actually i'm not going to uh, say pep watches the videos and took inspiration from my lineup but i am going to say he watches the videos and took inspiration from my lineup so <laughs> the four two three one has to be the formation that we play going forward do you think i think yeah i i would i would say so yeah i think that we still have lots of work to do. There's still a lot of players that aren't good enough. But, you know, massive result yesterday. Really, really pleased. The changes Pep made, he got them spot on, which was a complete polar opposite contrast to last week where I think he got the, the formation and the, the, the personnel wrong. He got it spot on yesterday. Um, and even his substitutions were spot on as well. Brilliant. Okay, so we have a somewhat small injury crisis at the moment going on, so Vialba's out. Uh, it was a knock um, that we've heard, that it's just something they're keeping an eye on. Uh, Roberts is out for a few months now um, and apparently went off injured uh, during the game yeah. and so did uh, Jake Clark Salter. Mm -hmm. Do you think this changes our stance in, going forward in January? It potentially does. I think that we were going to need to strengthen anyway in January, so we... We we look weak anyway. We looked very thin in areas. I think that across the back line, you've seen that we've we've lost quite a lot of players, but we're still okay. Mm. We were always quite well equipped at the back. <coughs> Sorry. Across certain areas of midfield, so central areas, we were always okay. But the wide players and the forward players were always our weaknesses. And to lose Vialba, to lose Crowley potentially... Um, to lose, obviously, two centre-backs now. Yes, I think it does change it. Um, Crowley will be the biggest miss of the, the lot, along with Roberts, I think. Clark Salter, hopefully, is back soon, but Harding came on did absolutely outstanding yesterday. He was very good, actually. Um, but Blues still need two or three in January. They need a, a top-class number nine. For me, they need someone with something a little bit different in the final third, one of the attacking three positions. Mm. Um, potentially out on the right-hand side. And 
maybe maybe another centre back slash left back. But I think that it does. I think that Pep realizes that we're a bit thin now, and maybe alone for an attacking player mm-hmm. like what Dean Garn is doing at West Brom mm-hmm. uh, could work. But yeah, I certainly think that they're going to be chasing up one or two now in January. Okay, fair enough. So you're saying we need someone on the right, really, of midfield going yeah, forward. I don't think Crowley's a right midfielder. No, I don't think he is either. But Definitely I think he works team. quite well, especially with Bella um, and Bellingham. He worked really well Yeah. Um, in that sort of formation yesterday before he came off injured. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, we obviously, we've been saying this for months now, looking at getting strikers in the, in the window as that's, well. That's, that's a given, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's speak about the first half. So... Unfortunately, it's not going down as a Jude Bellingham goal. It's going down as a Michael Morrison own goal. So cheers for that, mate. But <laughs> it was a poor Still marking. Still doing one for the team. Exactly, exactly. Poor marking for us to concede that goal from them at the end of the first half. How do you think we... Oh, that's the wrong question. Was their goal pre- preventable? Uh, but did you think 1-1 at halftime was fair on, on the style of play and how we've been playing? Yeah, I think that we prob- probably... 1-1... That was slightly flattering then, but wasn't unfair. I think we were the better team, so I think 1-0 would have been fair, 1-1. Uh, it's hit and miss. I think mm-hmm. that Bellingham had a, an outstanding game yesterday. Was was a, a, absolutely excellent in that, that number 10 pocket. Some of the positions he picked up, uh, especially in the first half, caused so many problems um, drifting across, uh, you know, in between the two centre-backs, while you know Alvaro was you know holding up and pushing them back. And obviously that's where the goals come from. Great link up play with Alvaro, who I've got to say was was outstanding. Um, but yeah, Jude fully deserves that, and I'm gutted it's gone down as an own goal. But uh, yeah, their goal certainly was preventable. Uh, Where's lost his man? Um, maybe a bit rusty, but he certainly grew into the game. Yeah, uh, again was absolutely outstanding yesterday, and you know considering he's marking Puskas, who I think is a real nightmare. If you catch him on his day, I think that he was first to everything. Wes, he mm. bullied him at times, so yeah, really pleased. But he'd have been disappointed with the goal. Yeah, it was a free mark. Uh, you know, it was a free header. Um, you know, we're doing a man marking and a, a gaping hole just opens up in the middle. It can't happen. So, we've looked relatively poor from crosses this season. So we need to. There's something that we need to look at, but. 1-1 one, one, it is what it is going into half time yeah definitely I did like in the first half apart from when we let in and the goal the way that we were organised on corners actually with Alvaro in front of the first post um, and then the majority of our players backing onto the back post I just liked that way that we had that security um, we looked a lot more stable when Crowley was on the pitch when Magoma came on he was almost in the wrong pos- position for me that wasn't very helpful with the goal but, but there we are something to work on but it's also got a lot of positives going forward. Um, so in the second half, we definitely stepped up a gear. I do not know what Pep said to them in that changing room, but whatever it did, it riled them up and they came out absolutely on fire the second half. Um, so we hit the bar, we squandered several chances. Um, but then that free kick from Jeremy Bella, wow, just fantastic. Yeah. Just tell me about that. Go over it a little bit for me. Technique. Practice, that is. And... Obviously, you need a bit of luck if it doesn't dip in the right place it, in the right time. It doesn't go in, but I know he struck it. It's a perfect strike. It was uh, well deserved. Obviously, Mags has hit the bar, and I think the Blues were again showing that wastefulness, that real sort of God. We get into some really good positions, and we just kind of like faff on the ball. We just kind of take one too many touches. Bellingham did one or two of those in the second half start, and Mags probably could have drilled that shot instead of trying to bend it. Mm. Um, and their keeper made it a good save as well. So it was good. I think it was a crucial point in the game where it turned it out our way because we we, the momentum was with us. We just needed that goal. And, and obviously um, to get it at that time was, was massive. And I think we, we really you know sat in the ascendancy then from there. Um, and only one team looked like winning it once that second goal went in. Um, we rode our luck a few times. I think they hit the bar. Because they've got a lot of good players, but mm. I think the overall Blues showed a lot of resilience, which we haven't. The two goals were really sloppy. 90th minute where we've really just gone to sleep. Um, and at the end of the first half again where we've gone to sleep, we've got to 
be more alert because that should have been three now yeah. really yesterday but yeah really pleased for Bella he, you can see how much it meant to him mm. uh, massive goal um, and he almost scored a second one um, just after a good save from the keeper so um, yeah pleased for him yeah and the third goal so the third goal thoroughly deserved for Alvaro Jimenez mm-hmm. I think we've got to admit that to that today he was fantastic yesterday almost um, looked like a player that we hadn't really seen all season we see the glimmers of it yeah. but I think him being the lone striker with the three behind him worked really well yeah. I think the way that he linked up the only thing for me is his confidence getting forward and taking those chances and scoring those goals which he did yesterday yeah. he didn't do it all of them but he learned throughout the game for me um, the chances that he missed he definitely convert them later on so how good was Alvaro in your opinion yesterday? Yeah, excellent. Uh, for me, the best complete performance of any striker we've had this season. Um, doesn't matter who's played up front. Um, he did everything. His link-up play, his hold-up play, his running, his movement. Um, he made some great moves into the channel. Uh, he hassled defenders all day and deservedly got his goal. Um, obviously, the 1-2 with Bellingham to set up the first one. Um, he was involved with you know, a lot of what Blues did going forward. And then the third one, uh, you know, he's pounced on a loose ball that Bella's knocked forward and uh, he's caught Morrison off guard, flat-footed, he smashed it against him. But the, the, the second ball, to take it the way he did on the half bounce, um, was a lovely finish with his left foot. Beautiful finish. Um, and he was unlucky. I, I, that's what baffled me about the Millwall game is that I thought we looked really good against Sheffield Wednesday. I thought while we weren't as in as much control as what we were yesterday yeah. I think that against Sheffield Wednesday we looked really good mm. and then for him to change it against Millwall it just made no sense and then he's obviously gone right we'll go back to the same system against Reading yeah. obviously with slightly different players though and it's worked and it's really worked and oh, I've, got to, I've got to point it out again I'm sorry but Duke can't play on Wednesday he just can't it, you, you've got to be brave now and say that's worked you know we've won, um, we've won against Reading. We we drew against Wednesday with Alvaro. You've got to just leave him to it now. Yeah, I think it does. He's in a show. bit of a hot streak. So. Yeah, I think it shows that Alvaro is the striker that works a lot better in the system, um, and we're not going to change that system unfortunately to suit Lukas Jukovic. He what, did come on very well. I will point as, out as a substitute though. Yeah, yeah, he did. He, he wow, well, he did. He got his head on everything he could, but the way we play. We don't want to score goals with our head. We want to score them with our feet. Duke's scored five goals this season, all five with his head. Alvaro's got three now, all three with his feet. You've got to look at where a player's strengths are. If we're playing on the floor, it's got to be into feet. It's Alvaro. It's got to be. Yeah. I fancy him to get another goal on Wednesday night if he plays. You've got to leave a striker while he's in hot form. Don't change it. That is massive for goal scorers. Yeah. Um, but yeah, really pleased for him. Brilliant. Uh, and yesterday, we both said that how great Josh McEachran was, and you said that he was your man of the match. Yeah. Do you, he has to keep his place on Wednesday, doesn't he? Really, that, let's let's be serious. Here. He has to, doesn't he? Yeah, as you can see, obviously from the the stats that we've had on the the screen throughout the episode, um, he was the key man yesterday for me. Made us tick, dictated the play, slowed it down to his own tempo. It, most of the balls he played, forward balls, found Jude. He linked up really well with Jude. Um, his first pass obviously was to turn Swivel in that number 10 pocket or he found Alvaro some of the passes he played to Alvaro and in all credit Alvaro's touch was absolutely outstanding um, when he did get it into his feet um, yeah he made a he, he made a massive difference yesterday um, you could see he was a bit leggy after 60 minutes that's because he's still not quite 90 minutes match fit mm. he's getting there he certainly could do 70 on yeah. on Wednesday night but um you know, it's the player we've we've needed in the centre mid. I think that it's great because it allows Bellingham to go forward as well, where he should be in that number ten. Obviously, he, he partners Sunich well. He's got a lot of intelligence. His movement's good. So, yeah, it's it's another good addition that we picked up on a free transfer. Obviously, and keep saying it. I've just, you know, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen that I said about Brentford. You know, and someone said, yeah, we need to just keep stealing Brentford players. Well, it's true because, you know, every player that we've got from Brentford seems to work. And don't you know anybody that he's taking the biasness out of it Hotter would have worked in this system he would have out on that right coming yeah. on his left foot he really would have um, Harley Dean's he's, again he's back to looking 
towards his best. Collins absolutely phenomenal. McEachern is an excellent player. They get they are good players. They're all yeah. ball playing players. We just need to be pragmatic going into the transfer market and look at what suits our style mm. and not just buy for the sake of it. But yeah, McEachern outstanding again yesterday. Uh, my man of the match. Um, long may it continue. So it was an excellent win yesterday for Birmingham City. Thoroughly enjoyed it and thoroughly deserved. Um, we will be giving away two tickets to the QPR game, so head over to social media to find the out festive season. <laughs> to find out how to win the competition for that. So yeah, um, all our social medias will be down here, down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. James, anything left from you to say? I have nothing else to say other than let's keep it going. Four points off the playoffs. Big win on Wednesday. Takes us a point off. Results going our way. Let's keep it going. Why not, eh? Keep right on.